K-I-L-R Taylor Games Hello gamers and simmers, I am the Keller Gamer and welcome to Flight Simulator 5.1 by Microsoft. This is the CD edition and this is running in DOSBox. And we've got the scenery uh, maxed out here. Um, and in order for this to work uh, decently in uh, DOSBox, uh, you're going to have to go into the config files of DOSBox and uh, jump this thing up to like 30,000 cycles uh, in, in order for this to run relatively smooth. Um, otherwise, it's going to run like garbage. <laughs> um, but let me just show you some quick settings here just so that way... Um, you have an idea of what it was that uh, I'm using in case you want to uh, play this in DOSBox. So I've got 640 by 400 with Haze, Visa, uh, not MasterCard. Uh, I got low fast here, some flicker medium, and scenery display options. I've got all of this checked. I'll just click OK. Um, aircraft display options, I got all that checked. Uh, let's see, sound, keyboard, mouse, joystick. I don't have my joystick hooked up just yet. I ain't going to worry about that just right now. I usually play with a keyboard with these old ones. All right, and then uh, scenery. I've got this on very uh, dense earth pattern off this is I'm not sure why this is ghosted out here I'm not sure how you change this so maybe you have to have a 3d card for this to work it's the only thing I can think of and there is no 3d card so not through DOS box so maybe that's why that doesn't work I don't know uh, but yeah. So you're going to want to set that to very dense so that way you can get all your buildings and stuff. Um, as far as dynamic scenery, I don't have any of this turned on. I had played before and I had all of this stuff checked and this thing was just running really, really bad. So I'm going to... Um, my cat's meowing. I'm going to run this without um, dynamic scenery to start off with. And then uh, we'll check it on the next one and see if it runs okay or if not. Because the first time I tried this, it was not running very well at all. Hey, look, it's green, just like... <laughs> Just like the Commodore 64. Okay. So we are here um, at Meg's. Meow. 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 So we're here at uh, Merrill C. Meg's in Chicago. And let's see here. Let me show you what we've got planned. Okay, so, uh, as you uh, have may have seen in some of the other uh, videos, and this is from the Commodore 64 map, but uh, we're still going to use it anyway, we're going to be flying out from Merle C. Megs, and we're going to be uh, hooking up with this uh, DuPage Vor, and... Uh, it's going to be bringing us in this direction, and we're going to be catching the Chicago O'Hare um, 
Well, in this case, we're not going to be catching the VOR because now there is an ILS uh, runway that we can actually um, localizer that we can uh, tune into. So that's what we're going to do there. So here is the here's the do page of uh, VOR right here. And we're going to catch this radio right here on the we're going to be going to this radio 104 we're, we're going to be heading obviously 284 so we're going to be heading in this direction and we're going to connect right here and then we're going to come in this way okay so what's the altitude here 8,000 5,000 so I don't know so it looks like we need to be around I don't know two 2300 probably probably around there okay so that is our game plan that's our game plan and I'm sticking to it all right so here we are and let's go ahead and turn our Cessna on Hey, I think it's on. <laughs> Sounds like it's on. My goodness, Talia. You're making like odd noises. All right, let's see. Can we get ATIS on this? Well, let's see if we can get the control tower. One. This comm radio does not work. <laughs> Maybe we can get it here. Maybe not. Oh my word. Stuff is not working. Okay, that worked. All right, communication radios. Click on it there. Yes, I hear you, girl. 113.9. No, that's not it. That's Chicago here. 121.3. <clears throat> um, listen to latest message. Well, I guess that didn't work. <laughs> huh. I think I have ATC on. No, I don't. Air traffic control on. Communication radios. Send message. Oh. Request to take off, request to land. Interesting. Okay, I'm beginning to remember some of the stuff now. Um, communication radios. Listen to latest message. All right, that didn't do nothing. Yay! <laughs> I guess that's not really the control tower at Meg's. All right, well... <clears throat> That's okay. We'll just slowly move around here.
I was excited with uh whoop ran out of steam there. I was excited with Flight Simulator 5 because there's taxiways and you actually have fuel station. You had a lot more airports, so you had the ability of doing more cross country flights this time around. Whoops, <laughs> not the brakes, not yet. All right, so can we talk to air traffic control? Let's see, um, communication radios, oh, um, no. Um, oh, send message, here we go. Request to take off. There we go. Microsoft Flight Simulator requesting take off clearance. That's who I am. I am Microsoft Flight Simulator. Microsoft Flight Simulator taxi to runway of your choice and hold short. Squawk 0277. Oh, does this actually work now? 0277. I don't know if this makes a difference or not. All right, so we did 0277. Now what? Send message. Can we do this now? <laughs> or does it just tell us to hold short all the time? I don't remember. Well, let's see, now that's changing at 0255 on that one. Does it, have, does it ever say, okay, you can go ahead and take off? I don't remember. I don't think I want to sit here and, and wait, do you? I don't. All right. We'll just say they came back and said, uh, well, we'll change this to 255. Just in case. But we're going to take off anyway, so. Now that over there to the left, I I think is some extra scenery that I downloaded.
Oh, it is actually telling us to... Okay, cool. So eventually it did say, clear for takeoff. You're clear for takeoff. Thanks! <laughs> See you later! <clears throat> and there we are, downtown Chicago. In Flight Simulator 5. Well, I just hit a key that I should not have hit. I have no idea how to get rid of that now. How do we get rid of this? Well, that got rid of it. Okay. I was trying to look at my views. I was trying to look over to the side. But I don't think I'm going to be able to. Huh. That don't work. Nope, that don't work. Nope. <laughs> I thought you turned the numerical keypad off to do it, but apparently not. Oh, there we go. You have to hold the shift key down in order to, which kind of affects your controls too at the same time. All right, let's let's stop messing around here and let's let's catch our let's catch our radials like we're supposed to. All right, that should be far enough. And I believe we're at the height that we want to be at. Now see, this Cessna has got a landing gear also. <clears throat> this is why I've grown to like landing gears and Cessnas. At least in Flight Simulator. Looks like we got a airport over there, right over here. I'll tell you one thing, without all this texture here, it's a lot easier to see the airports, that's for sure.
But at least the ground doesn't look as boring anymore. Turning down the throttle some. Okay. Our radial is coming. We're coming towards the intersection of it. start turning towards it here. No rush. Not yet. Now, even though, see, I, I even though I had bought scenery disc for the Commodore 64 and for the Amiga, I think Flight Simulator 5 and 95 was the one where I started to actually buy more stuff for it because I got like the Microsoft Paris and New York and Hawaii and the Caribbean Japan I don't think I have those anymore I probably need to go look and get them again so I can do videos what do you all think? think I should look into getting those and doing some retro videos Flying on those areas again. Well, our ILS seems to be working. did some pretty major cross-country flights on this one too. This one and Flight Simulator 98. I think I did more on this one than Flight Simulator 98. It's been so long, I, I can't remember. We're going to relive those memories now, though. Just because... Check out that photo real scenery. Yay. <laughs> That's some pretty accurate stuff. Considering that we went from a green <laughs> an all green uh, landscape to this. It was, I'd say it was a pretty big deal. 
I was like, oh, wow, yeah. That actually looks like we're flying over something now. Okay, well, it looks like we're on pretty much on the radio that we want to be on. Now the question is, where is that airport? We are 19 miles away from the DuPage airport. I'm not sure if it's over there. I'm not even sure if what I'm tuned in is the right... Wow! Alright, maybe I should change the VOR to the Chicago O'Hare VOR. Get back on this one radio here. All right, we're going to change this. Remember, one ten ten. Let's change this to one thirteen point nine. Well, I guess we'll fly in that direction. So we're lining up our... We're centering that radial so that way we can fly towards it is what we're doing. To tell us what direction we need it to go. That's why it was saying 27 originally. Whoops. It's possible that the uh, the ILS runway... I was tuned in to something, but it may not have been for this airport because it didn't look... It didn't look like it was working. I mean, it was working, but it didn't look like I was catching on to anything. I believe this is the airport right up here. It's going to be in this direction. using our navigational stuff here. 
So we're flying towards it. Once this lines up here, we're trying to catch the 027 radial. Or we could uh, move this and say, oh, okay. We'll just move this over right about there. Well, now that we know we're headed towards the airport, let's see what happens if I change this to zero four. We're six miles away from it. Aha, I see it. There's the runway right over here. Alright, landing gear down. Let's get our flaps down too. <laughs> Heck. We'll, <laughs> we'll just put them all down. <laughs> There's our runway. All right, gear is down. Flaps are down. And there's the airport. Trying to get lined up with the runway here. Not too bad. I'm gonna pull up here. Up. Power down. Woo, yes.
All right. Right on the runway. That's how we like it. Let's, let's get off into the taxiway here. There's some aircraft hangers over there. I'm like looking at, uh, around here. Okay, so I guess I am going to head... when I start moving here. Start moving! We're gonna head over there to the gates. We'll keep going this way. <laughs> We're like shaking back and forth. What's that? Is that wind turbulence? Look at that. My goodness. We're going all man. Breaks. Breaks. <laughs> Boy, the look of how this scenery was moving around was kind of messing with my my eyes. There we go. All right, we're on another runway here. We want to go over there. I think there's a taxiway coming up. <laughs> yeah, right there.
I thought I saw a yellow mark. I think that's the fuel box. Yeah, here we go. We're going to park ourselves at a gate over here. <laughs> well, not much of a gate. Yay! Wave! Wave! Wave to the people. <laughs> All right. Blur. Yep. So we turn the aircraft off. All right. So here we are. We are here at Chicago O'Hare International. And, um, well, thanks for joining me on this uh, interesting retro flight. And uh, we will certainly do more of these along with uh, the other old flight simulators and um, be sure to keep tuned in for some other simulation videos because we'll definitely be doing these flights in uh, the more modern uh, flight simulators too all right well we'll see you on another on another flight take care i hope you enjoyed the beginning of our world tour and trip down memory lane with this flight simulator be sure to check out the other versions of this same flight with different simulators. Why? Well, it gives us a chance to look back at what was, how things changed, and it's just fun. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on another flight.